Drops it right on the end. Good luck. the weather forecast for State College because I understand <laughs> that is your career path. Go, you have 20 seconds. That, uh, that's my career path. Uh, we actually just saw some snow move through the State College area last night. Got a nice coating throughout the area, so winter's still hanging on throughout much of central Pennsylvania for the next few days. You are hired. Good morning, Twin Tiers meteorologist Ryan Bells here with your first warning weather forecast. Oh! Let me tell you, that was fun. Head out here to the Tioga County Fair. Take a look at this view. I mean, it's gorgeous, isn't it? What a great view. The weather is perfect for any outdoor plans you have this weekend if you're coming to the track or if you're cooking a barbecue for Labor Day. Wider view of our satellite and radar. You can see low pressure off to our west, counterclockwise circulation here, providing this rain moving through the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. We'll take the 30s. Right? I'll take 30 over anything negative or even in the lower teens. See, now your requests are just getting too detailed here. Right? I can only <laughs> do so much, okay? You control the weather, that's what everybody thinks. But do you know the story of how Colin stopped the Grinch from stealing Christmas? Every Ithacan down in Ithaca liked Christmas a lot. Because you sent me back out here in the cold again for throwing the snowball at you, I think I gotta throw it at you guys one more time. It's always on five o'clock at Climbing Binds. And you don't just have to take my word for it. Temperatures throughout the month of September, all of these red shaded days were days that we were well above average. Let's see if those fall lake temperatures we're feeling tonight are here to stay for good. <laughs> Ryan? Yes. What's the deal? At least for the time being. Okay. Going into early next week, temperatures definitely going to cool down. If you like today, much of the same is in store tomorrow, Sunday, and into Monday as well. Temperatures warming to near 90 degrees by Monday. We will continue to see some snow and sleet throughout the next few hours. We are... We're going to play a game here. Find the cold front. Can you spot it? That's right back here, stretching from western Ohio down to the south. In front of it, temperatures in the 50s and 60s. Behind it, cooler conditions. Now, you know, my favorite show growing up was the Dukes of Hazard. So let's jump in here like Bo and Luke Duke would and fire this bad boy up. You ready for this? Now, your severe weather Team 6 forecast. Good evening, central Pennsylvania. Winds are starting to calm down from the gust we saw last night, close to 50 and 60 miles an hour here on our Altoona camera. You can see the flag not blowing as much as it has been over the last few days, but we're still going to see gusts tonight close to 30 miles an hour throughout the night tonight and into the first part of your day on Monday. And that tops off our weather headlines, the breezy conditions that we're still going to be experiencing with winds gusting close to 30 miles an hour throughout the night tonight and into the first part of the day on Monday with some rain and snow showers hours possible tonight. Sustained winds out of the southwest 15 to 25. Like I mentioned, winds starting, wind gusts starting to decrease. Those scattered rain and snow showers throughout the night tonight, less than an inch of accumulations, and then rain likely throughout the better part of your day on Monday before sunshine returns Tuesday and Wednesday into my severe weather team six forecast. With abundant sunshine Tuesday, cool temperatures. Our wind chills Tuesday morning. We're going to be in the single digits. And then scattered rain showers arrive Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening. But temperatures throughout the entire forecast, well below average. Our average for this time of the year should be in the upper 50s. We'll be far from that throughout the forecast. Right now, though, throughout the viewing area, we're looking at temperatures holding steady in the lower 30s throughout much of the viewing area. Still 40 in Johnstown, 33 in Altoona, down into the lower 30s, Dubois and Clearfield right now. Temperatures throughout the entire viewing area, wider view of it. You can see that temperatures are pretty steady in the low 30s. Still a few 40s holding on in Johnstown, upper 30s, Somerset, Ligonier, mid 40s at this hour. And these temperatures compared to this time yesterday are slightly warmer. We were down into the lower 20s last night for overnight lows, some 10 degrees warmer than this time last night in Johnstown, 13 degrees warmer than this time last night in Ligonier. So it's not going to last very long though. Another clipper system is making its way in. You can see it here, a wider view of our satellite and radar. You can see some snow showers moving through northern portions of the viewing area. The heaviest of the snow going to stay well to our north, but they could get upwards of eight inches close to the Great Lakes. We're going to see just a light coating throughout much of the area tonight and into the first part of your day tomorrow. You'll see that here on future cast. Clouds stick around tonight. 
A light scattered snow shower possible, then rain likely throughout the day on Monday, possibly heavy at times. And then we might see a peak, a few peaks of sunshine late on Monday. And then going into Tuesday, we start to clear it out. Abundant sunshine's in store for the day on Tuesday. Still windy. You can see the wind streams here very tightly packed out of the northwest. So it's still going to be quite breezy throughout the day on Tuesday. High pressure, though, keeps us sunny going into Wednesday as well. Like I mentioned, just a light coating throughout the area tonight. Nothing major. Temperatures tonight cooling down into the lower 30s with uh, a few rain and snow showers possible. Accumulations less than an inch. Windy, though, for tomorrow across the northern Alleghenies. Temperatures in the low 40s. Rain and snow showers possible across the eastern Alleghenies. Temperatures a little warmer into the upper 40s, low 50s throughout the viewing area. And for the Laurel Highlands, temperatures in the mid 40s with showers likely throughout the day. And here's your severe weather team six seven day forecast. Sunny skies Tuesday and Wednesday. Temperatures back into the low 50s, but then rain returns Thursday and into Friday. Good evening, Twin Tears, and happy Friday. It is 610 on your Friday evening. Live look at our Cornell Skycam. Mix of sun and clouds throughout the area. Temperatures in the low 80s today. One more day of those low 80s, and then temperatures will start to cool back down into the 70s. And a few upper 60s are in my seven-day forecast coming right up. Our weather headlines, what we're tracking for you. Topping it off, the partly cloudy skies we're going to see tonight. Isolated shower possible. Patchy fog late tonight and into the first part of your day on Saturday, but that burns off and we're going to see a sunny Saturday in store. The last of those 80 degree temperatures tomorrow, five degree guarantee of 82, at least for the time being, and then temperatures cool back down, like I mentioned. And then going into Sunday, wrapping up the weekend, a stormy Sunday is in store. Severe storms possible going into Sunday. I'll have details on that coming right up. Right now, though, at the Elmira Corning Regional Airport, sunny skies, 81 degrees. Winds out of the west-southwest at 5 miles an hour. Up in Ithaca, slightly cooler into the upper 70s with a few more clouds. Dew point holding steady in the mid-50s. That's a little bit down from where it was earlier today, so the mugginess is starting to fade away throughout the late afternoon and evening hours. Satellite and radar, sun and clouds out there right now. More sun in store going into tomorrow. Right now, though, throughout the viewing area, temperatures holding steady in the upper 70s, low 80s, 83 in Corning, 77 in Watkins Glen, Spencer 76, and 80 degrees as you head out towards the Binghamton area. Wider view of our temperatures you can see out to the west, still some more upper 70s, low 80s. That'll move its way into our area for tomorrow. And then take a look further off to the west, nor near Green Bay and Minneapolis, these 70 and 60 degree temperatures. That'll make its way into our area going into Sunday and throughout next week. Satellite and radar, you can see the clear skies for tomorrow. Sunny skies off to our west thanks to that high pressure. Further off to the west where those cooler temperatures were, some showers stretching all the way down, and that'll be making its way into our area for some stormy Sunday in store with potentially some strong two severe storms. We'll take a look at that. The National Weather Service's Severe Weather Prediction Center has put us in the marginal area for Sunday, just almost into the slight area, so we could see some strong storms on Sunday and some windy conditions as well. Marginal area means that Few thunderstorms, close to severe or possible windy conditions, and the potential for some hail exists going into the day on Sunday. Future track mapping it out for you. Partly cloudy skies tonight, a few isolated showers possible, and then going into tomorrow, sunny skies early, clouds increase throughout the day, and then we'll see showers move in late Saturday night and into the day on Sunday. Some of these storms could be heavy at times and potentially strong as well throughout the day on Sunday. It'll be very widespread throughout the area going into the day on Sunday and then some lingering showers into Monday. Tonight's forecast cooling it down into the lower 50s. 52 our overnight low with partly cloudy skies. Can't rule out that isolated shower like I mentioned. Tomorrow five degree guarantee warming it up to 82 degrees. Mix of sun and clouds. More clouds move into the area late Saturday and into the day on Sunday. Tomorrow night Pioneers home opener 705 start time for the game at Dunfield and I hate to be the bearer of bad news looks like some scattered showers might make their way in ahead of all those storms that we're looking for on Sunday so make sure you have the rain jacket handy if you're headed out tomorrow night. Forecast 5 degree guarantee for today 82 unofficially 83 at the Elmira Corning Regional Airport and there's that first warning 7 day forecast 82 tomorrow the 5 degree guarantee 77 Sunday with those storms possible and then fall into the 70s and a few upper 60s there so cooler oh, patterns yeah. in store hopefully less humid as well it looks like that would be good and you said tomorrow night rain do you know what time specifically it's going to be it? it's going to be close i think the first part of the game will be dry but then the chance for some showers moves in late in the okay. game and then into sunday so as might well. have to get postponed a little bit yeah okay and then on probably. sunday real quick rain all day long looking like widespread scattered. looks like going to be scattered the first part of the day but then some strong thunderstorms possible throughout the afternoon hours, so All do right. be careful. We'll keep our raincoats handy. Exactly. Thanks, Ryan.
It's been a dream of Colin Tolan's to become a police officer. And when the Ithaca Police Department learned of his dream, they made that a reality. Colin is only nine years old, but has shown the bravery that is necessary for a police officer as he's battled brain cancer since age two and endured six brain surgeries. Now, do you solemnly swear to uphold the Constitution of the state of New York and the Constitution of the United States of America and to faithfully discharge the duties of the office of police officer in the city of Ithaca? Ithaca Mayor Savante Myrick and Police Chief Barber swore in Colin as an honorary police officer. So that's Officer Colin Hayward Tolan now. He first thought he would be best suited in the office, but the department convinced him otherwise. I just like helping people. I decided to get the job to be a police receptionist. <laughs> hey, you know, Colin's taking this really seriously. He thinks this is a job. so. You know, just so you know, this isn't just like, oh, come down to the uh, station and we'll show you around and we'll have a fun day. This is like, you know, this is a career change for him. For me personally, it's definitely probably the highlight of my career to be able to grant a wish to someone who is so worthy of so much more than just a wish. And uh, he is inspiring, he's brave and courageous. And I tell you, it touches my heart. I know it's touched the heart of every single officer in that crowd today. Officer Hayward Tolan enjoyed his day as Mayor Myrick proclaimed it Colin Hayward Tolan Day in the city of Ithaca. I think it's pretty amazing that everyone came and that they are celebrating, so I'm very surprised. It meant so much to us, and I mean, I, I was like genuinely the proud mother of a police officer this morning when we drove up. Colin had a message for everyone. You should always follow your dream no matter what. So if you have a dream of becoming a uh, firefighter or anything, then you should actually get that job if you want to have that as your job. First on the agenda for Officer Tolan is a tour of the police station. Reporting in Ithaca, Ryan Bells, WENY News. But you know, there are a bunch of school children that want to know about snow days, right? I always look forward to those, didn't exactly. you? Exactly. So uh, we sent you out on the road to talk to some uh, school officials. Yeah, that's for sure. I sat down with a bunch of school officials, learned about some techniques that they have to keep the children safe during the winter months and the preparation that goes into it well before the winter months. So let's take a look. You can see at the bottom of your screen, closings and delays, mostly delays two hours this morning, all because of those slick roads. Yeah, it came pretty quickly yesterday afternoon. Just Snow, sleet and freezing rain. Bus drivers have to deal with all sorts of elements during the winter season. I know you've enjoyed that two hour delay this morning, but it's made for a difficult morning for school officials. Come aboard and let's go to school. And sit down with Northern Tioga School District Superintendent Diana Barnes. It's the night before school, the morning of school or even during the school day, and the snow has begun to fall. What now? If the snow is falling that night, I will share with you uh, that the superintendents in the area start communication, and it stays and goes all night long. We'll certainly keep an eye on the weather. If they're still forecasting snow by the next morning, uh, we will cancel school for the next day. If it's in the morning and snow continues to fall, um, or if and we might not know that that's going to happen, but it starts to happen, um, then we'll have to have an early closing and we start that process. From rural Tioga County, Pennsylvania to the edge of Seneca Lake, the districts have to be prepared. We definitely have days where here in town it will be like today. Um, it's wet, it's damp, it's cold. When you get up on the hilltops um, and even on the upper hilltops as you as you go heading towards Ithaca, um, you have quite a, a variance where we may not have any snow down here. They might have eight or nine inches of snow up there which means they need to be prepared for anything and everything from not thinking the snow was coming in to getting out in the middle of the route and all of a sudden it's snowing and you can't see off the front of the nose. But advances in technology help combat that. Um, when they come up onto a, an area of road that might not be plowed yet or, or has some slush on it, they can drop the chains to gain traction. Um, we live in such a valley area, hill and valley area, that um, they get used a lot. So the decision ultimately comes down to you? Yes, sir, it does. <laughs> 
I think if you were to ask most superintendents what's the worst decision they have to make, it'll be whether we close school or whether we don't close school. But what's the worst they've seen that they should be prepared for? I was actually a teacher at the time, and we, we had a, a very heavy snowstorm. I think we had over 36 inches, all right, and the school system was shut down for three days in a row. We were under a winter storm warning. Um, the snow came in like gangbusters about 10 o'clock that night. Um, reached out to people, said let's get it on the 11 o'clock news so parents know. Um, woke up at 6 o'clock that morning and there was no snow. Um, but again, better safe than sorry. A large majority of students look forward to snow days, but school officials have a different consensus. <laughs> For me, it, my morning starts about 3.30, 4 o'clock. It is much more stressful <laughs> than a regular day. It's a double-edged sword. Um, for, for me, it's definitely an early morning and it's a long day if we go to school. Um, it's also one of those things where if we don't get the call right, we're in, in trouble either way. How do we do this and do it well together? It's the only way we can do it. 323 square miles is a lot of territory and uh, we want to do it to the best of our ability so that we can provide, you know, for, for the individuals who live within our district. That's important to us. For the latest on school closings and delays throughout the winter season, be sure to stick with WENY News on air and online. After weeks and even months of testing out Watkins Glen International's new surface, Goodyear has decided to bring a harder tire compound than they brought in previous years. Similar though, this Goodyear Racing Eagle to the tires that they brought to other NASCAR circuits where they've done repaves as well. And drivers, they say this new tire compound is a lot more grippy. The old surface was still still really fast, had a lot of grip, wasn't really any issues with it, so I expect it to be similar to races you've seen here in the past. On the other hand, tire scientist for the number 88 Hendrick Motorsport Chevrolet, Rob Lopes, thinks conditions are going to be a lot different. Um, the tire being harder, uh, you know, it, it takes some guys to get used to a new tire, you know, and, and the repave has put out some challenges out there that, that actually have nothing to do with the tire. Jeff made a comment that he can feel the difference in the curbing. It's definitely uh, a new challenge with a repave. Um, when it comes to the race strategy, it changes as well because typically you don't see the tires wear out a lot because it's a real smooth surface, new surface, high speeds, but the tires really hold on to their speed. So it really comes down to managing your fuel throughout the race and hitting your pit windows. That's all fine and dandy if Mother Nature doesn't wreak havoc. With highs expected to top out in the lower 80s with abundant sunshine, we have the potential for seeing triple digit track temperatures. Um, our track temps today were roughly at 117. Um, I would think your, your higher temps are probably, like anything else, it's going to make it a little more greasy, a little more slick, especially with a harder tire. Speaking of slick conditions, Goodyear is also prepared should Mother Nature not cooperate in terms of precipitation. It'd be great if it rained because we've got rain tires here and it'll be interesting to see those guys run in the rain. It wouldn't be the first time though. Let's flash back to when the intimidator himself, Dale Earnhardt Sr., took to Watkins Glen International during wet track conditions. But like I mentioned, the forecast tonight and throughout the day tomorrow for the cheese at 355 at the Glen is for dry conditions. So no need to worry about those rain tires this year. Reporting from Watkins Glen International, Ryan Bells, WENY News. The Verizon IndyCar Series took to the track for their third and final practice session Saturday as well as qualifying. Scott Dixon made it to the Firestone Fast to Six and went on to claim the pole for the IndyCar Grand Prix at the Glen with a track record of 1 minute 22.5259 seconds. With Scott Dixon's previous success at Watkins Glen International winning three straight races in 2005, 6, and 7, and his success so far this weekend, that must make him feel good going into Sunday's big race. Uh, it's the first part of the job done, um, you know, but you know, it doesn't guarantee you anything. I think, you know, it, it guarantees that we start at the front of the <laughs> front of the race. Um, but there's a lot of unknowns, you know, uh, the track's been repaved, you know, we've got different tires, different car, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that we don't know too much about. So uh, strategy is going to be pretty interesting, I think, tomorrow with tires and then also fuel. Um, so, yeah, you know, I think uh, you want to come to tracks, you want to be fast, you want to have good pace. That's, that's definitely why we practice and test and qualify. 
um, but it doesn't, as I said, it doesn't guarantee you anything. So we'll uh, we'll have to do the best that we can, and and uh, you know. All we're hoping for is that we're in the same position at the end of the race. It's the hard thing with with motor racing. It's you know it's never just a driver. You know it's strategy. It's you know pit stops. Um, you know the engine. You know fuel mileage. There's there's so many different equations that you have to work out. And still an unknown. You know I think we'll get a little bit better idea on on uh, you know how the reds run and and the degradation uh, come the warm up tomorrow morning before the race. Um, you know typically you don't see anybody running any kind of red tire uh, because you want to save them and use uh, as many sets of them as you can but um, you know I think with uh, the query of really not sure what they're going to do I think you're going to see a lot of people running on them and trying to figure out uh, you know a different way around it so um, you know uh, I you know it, it's it's hard to see where that's going to play out but you know it's it's definitely uh, a point that everybody's put under a magnifying glass it, uh, it's going to be a good one to watch man so uh, it's going to come down to the wire reporting at Watkins Glen International I'm Ryan Bells WENY News